here at the Civil Service House for the get-together which has been organized by the Public Officers Welfare Council. I thank you for your presence here, which surely will give another thrust to this event. Without being long, allow me to invite Mr. Rui for his address. Mr. Alain Wong, Minister of Civil Service Affairs, Mr. Satyaved Sibalak, the Senior Chief Executive of the Ministry, and uh, I see also among our invitees and the permanent secretaries, heads of departments, I see uh, the Deputy Secretary for Foreign Affairs. Uh, it will be difficult for me to list all those uh, familiar faces which I see around me. So, so we have board members of the Public Officers Welfare Council. We have a representative of departmental staff uh, welfare associations. We have uh, many stakeholders who have been with us uh, during the year for the activities that we have organized. So, uh, shall I say good afternoon or, or shall I say good evening? So, I would say good evening to all of you. And uh, it is my pleasure and privilege as Chairman of the Public Officers Welfare Council to extend a very warm welcome to all of you and to thank you for your presence at this uh, function. I wish also to say a special word of thanks to the Honourable Minister who readily agreed to join us on this uh, occasion in spite of his many commitments, especially at this time of the year. Well, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware or you are all aware, the Public Officer Welfare Council has been in existence for 22 years now. And uh, the objectives of the POWC, as we say, are clearly set out in the POWC Act of 1992, as subsequently amended. And uh, our main objective, in fact, our motto is to promote the welfare of public officers and their families. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we are, we are here, we have thought of having this uh, annual meeting with our shareholders. So, it's simply to express our appreciation and thanks for their collaboration, uh, for this successful organization of many of our activities. So let me, first of all, assure you that I do not propose to make a belong of all the activities that we have organized uh, through the year. But however, uh, I shall fail in my duty if I don't use this opportunity to express our thanks and special appreciation to all those who have helped us in uh, achieving what we have been able to do for the year 2014. Maybe I should start with uh, our payroll ministry, the Ministry of Civil Service Affairs. Uh, Mr. Satyaved Sibalak is a, is a friend, I won't say an old friend of mine, but uh, we have been working together in the service. I've been in the service for over 40 years, so I'm glad to see uh, those who are present here, many people who have been a great help to you. Why I have mentioned his name? Because of the encourage, encouragement and support of the SE and his staff at the close collaborators at the ministry, who have always encouraged us and given, given us their support in order to, to achieve what is in the PWC Act. But also, uh, maybe you are not aware, the POWC has a, a team of four or five officers who are public officers who have been seconded for duty in order to serve the POWC. So when you look at the amount of work involved in the coordination of the different activities, those officers spending their weekend because when we organize activity for public officers and their families, it means that to, for them to be their family, you should be using the, 
either the weekend or the special vacation. Or that. So that is why the amount of work that goes into the organization of such activities may be unknown to many of those who are looking at the PWC. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if it's not too much, I will ask you to give a big hand to those uh, the ministry and the staff who have support, supported the, the PWC. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, I do not propose to go through the list of activities. However, I must, I must acknowledge the contribution and assistance that we have received, especially from the supervising offices of ministries and departments, who release their offices in order to participate some activities which simply could not be held after working hours. So for them, I am appreciative of the fact that in spite of the fact that uh, uh, the work at the ministry is important, they release their offices so that they can participate in our, our activities. And we are greatly encouraged to see a greater number coming to the PWC with the expectations of activities that should be organized for them. Even for this afternoon, we had a workshop with the representatives of the Departmental Staff Association in order to take stock of the activities that we have carried out and also what is being done at the level of this Departmental Staff Welfare Association and also uh, seek their views and suggestions about the activities which uh, we propose to hold in the year 2015. So what we do is that we Usually, the budget would have been approved, and then we plan our action plan depending on the contribution from government. So this year, clearly, maybe the budget will come early, earlier next year. But then uh, I, I take this advantage of having the Honorable Minister with us, you know, to also get him to be our advocate in order to get additional funds hmm, for our... Uh, activities. So, Honorable Minister, I'm addressing this message to the Honorable Minister. If you see, Minister, we are gathered here at the Civil Service House. So, you just had a quick glance at the Civil Service House when you see that it's a converted uh, residential quarters which were built, in fact, is in Britannia Park. That was when Britannia ruled the waste. Hmm? So, you can imagine that, you know, for us, we would need to get some bigger space and expand our activities. Why I mentioned Mr. Svelak, because thanks to him, we also we have approached him in order to get additional space. We've got a building which is next to, yeah, you will see where the cars are parked. So that is another government quarters. So we see that uh, for this it needs to be renovated. And then if we get some additional space, I think uh, I can tell you, Minister, that our long cherished hope is to see a place, a modern building, which is fully equipped with facilities which enable us to expand the scope of activities, run workshops or seminars, or people can come with the family to meet in a relaxed atmosphere. I know that is an ambitious project. But then I think if we work together, I have no doubt that if we are together, we will find a solution to that. And uh, as I said, uh, we, are, we get the full support of, of the parent ministry and then the stakeholders also uh, who are here. I must also add something for them. Because when we organize our activities, we try even stays at the hotels, trying to get the best package. For someone with a family during school vacation, you want to take a short break of two or three days, we try to get the best deal. And we have been able to forge this kind of partnership with the hotel. We organize excursions, we organize package tours to Reunion Island, to uh, retreats. So uh, we do this with, this with the help and assistance that we get from our sponsors. But especially the last thing I think I must say is about the KMS, the civil service KMS. 
It's a big event, which annually it attracts more than 125,000 visitors. So for them, this is a costly thing. But then uh, we have approached some hours. I won't mention the names of the sponsors. But then they, we had, we had their support. So there is an opportunity tonight also to say a big thank you to all of them. So, Minister, I promise to be brief uh, uh, since, uh, but then maybe before resuming, I see, I think uh, I must see something which is personal to me, because I've been the chairman of the PWC uh, for some time now. Uh, here, I was chairman when I was uh, secretary for public service affairs in charge of the ministry. So, it has been a very long and rich experience to me. So today, I believe uh, I have spoken to the SEO also because that will be my last function as the chairman of the EWC. Because I believe that we should be getting new blood or people with new ideas and new leaders that can take the lead in order to do something. The common thing is to do something that will make a difference to, difference to our public offices and bring this kind of work-life balance, especially in these days where life is very hectic. So, uh, since, uh, as I said, this is an opportunity, a new opportunity, I get to say a big thank you to all those who have been working in close collaboration with board members and uh, uh, the POWC for uh, the organization of activities. So I wish the uh, Honorable Minister that uh, the new team comes and gives all the support so that together we can achieve the stated objectives. So before ending, let me also wish all of you here a very happy and uh, prosperous new year with the hope that the future will be brighter uh, uh, in 2015. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, Mr. Alain Wong, colleagues, senior chief executives, permanent secretaries, and the acting secretary for foreign affairs, friends and colleagues of the trade unions, members of the chairman and members, chairpersons and members of the staff association of various ministries and departments. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you this evening and participate with you in this get together. I don't intend to be long because I think today is the day of the POWC and obviously the Minister of Civil Service Affairs. But it's quite an opportunity also for me for, to say a big thank you to the Chairman and Executive Committee of the POWC as well as the staff of the POWC for the excellent work they have carried out they keep on carrying out year after year, and they keep on improving on the services that they provide to improve the life, work, balance of each and every single servant. <laughs> and as the chairman just told you, with such a small staff, they have been doing a lot, they have given a lot, have done the work with great dedication. And it is an opportunity also for me to thank my colleagues, heads, permanent secretaries, senior chief executives, and heads of many departments for the support to the ministry and, the, for the, and for the support to the Public Officers Welfare Council in the activities as pointed out by the chairman in his speech just now. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to have your support and it's very encouraging and I look forward to continue support on your side. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have, as new Minister of Civil Service Affairs, somebody who may not necessarily be new to you because he has excelled in the field, in the field of sports. And I think he is somebody who very much attached to the welfare of 
of, of workers or people given his past experience in where he has been working before in the private sector and elsewhere. So he is somebody and from the very first discussions we had, he told me he is here. One of his main, one of his personal main mission in the civil service is to ensure that the welfare, all the staff of the old departments and ministries are very well looked after, well taken care of, so that he believes, because he believes that excellence in performance depends also largely on the state of mind of the people. The better at peace, the more at peace you are with yourselves, the better we will perform, I think he's quite right. And I just heard my good friend Mr. Rui mention the facilities that we have here and the extension of facilities to provide, to be able to provide a proper place for civil servants and former civil servants, why not? I'm soon going to be one anyway. Um, a place where we can meet, we can exchange views, we can network. And uh, it has occurred, I mean, I think we've talked about that in the past, and it has been one of my dreams since I've joined the civil service, that we should have a civil service house, a proper civil house, uh, worthy of its name for the civil service of Mauritius. You travel along the world, around the world, you see, even in Kenya, in many other countries, you have civil service clubs of very good repute. And the way our civil servants meet and where other people want to join is even as, you know, uh, honorary members so that they, want, they can connect with people and we can, uh, you know, have spend some time uh, of leisure with our families, with our children, with our friends. And, and also at the same time, enrich our, our connection, our... our, our knowledge uh, about the people and try to know how to work with them properly. And uh, we can only support what my good friend uh, Dave Rui just said, and I would go even a step further, I would say that we would need really to have a proper civil service club. And uh, I would, in my capacity as senior chief executive, invite the minister to reflect over it. And uh, I would have talked to you about it earlier, but since it's been mentioned already, so it's also a pledge, it is also a request from my side that I can make, I would like to make to you, Mr. Minister. Um, I have also uh, heard the words of, um, parting words of De Ruhi as chairman of the Public Officers Welfare Council. I will personally fail in my duty if I do not thank you most heartily for your dedication and spirit with which you have worked. Although you are a retired civil servant, you have worked very, very, you have put a lot of energy and thoughts and you have given so much of your time to the welfare of your colleagues, the civil servant, I mean, so your, past, your colleagues of the past. Uh, in the civil service to ensure that they have a better quality of life themselves as well as their, as their families. I think we deserve, Mr. Uh, Rui deserves a big applause from us. And it was so enjoyable working with you since I joined the ministry as senior chief executive. We worked in very good team spirit, in partnership, and you mentioned this house the civil service house and I think I know how much you yourself has given yourselves and your staff to the to make this shabby building into what it is today so thank you for that thank you for everything that you have done and uh, we look forward again to meet soon and we can obviously meet at the civil service club eventually why not and uh, wish you well uh, in your in your Continued activities. I know you have a lot of activities on hand that you keep on doing. You are not going to rest uh, at peace or in peace. Um, I would also have uh, a word of thanks, like you, to the sponsors, because I know you have a, a very limited budget, and each time I know 
Mr. Bandu keeps on coming to me and said, look, why don't you increase the amount, why don't you increase the amount? And uh, I'm sure the minister will definitely look into this and I, as responsible officer and accounting officer, I will find to, I will try to find some means to increase your, your, the budget of the UWC. But still, we will still have to depend on our sponsors for the various activities that we, that the PWC uh, undertake. And I would like also, on the behalf of the Ministry of Civil Service Affairs, to place on record our appreciation to the sponsors. <coughs> Uh, with these words, uh, let me uh, thank again all of you for your participation to this evening, for your support, and I take this opportunity to wish you all a very, very happy New Year, lots of good health, prosperity, and chances at the Lotto, why not? <laughs> and um, enjoy yourselves and come back to work fresh in a new spirit, and I will leave the floor now to the Minister. Acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Senior Chief Executive and Permanent Secretaries, Mr. Rui, Chairman of the Public Offices Welfare Council, members of the Executive Committee of the Public Offices Welfare Council, ladies of Federations of Civil Service Unions, chairpersons and members of staff welfare associations. Ladies and gentlemen, it gave me great pleasure to be with you this evening for this get together with the Public Officers Welfare Council, has gathered supervising officers of ministries and departments, trade unions, leaders representative of different part-time staff welfare associations, sponsors and other stakeholders who have participated in and supported the activities and events organized by the council during the year. This is my first please the contact since as your office as Minister of Civil Service Affairs. Allow me first and foremost to give you the assurance that whether in the private sector or in the public service, I'm fully aware that the welfare of employees is a matter of prime importance. Although I have a private sector professional background, I have some insight of the public sector as I was chairman of the Tourism Authority and of the National Real Estate Company. I'm thus well placed to understand customers' requirement in terms of quality of service. I will just put my experience in the private sector to the benefits of the civil service to bring about the change of mindset through my understanding of what the public expect from us. In this context, I believe that it is if our officers are given a good work environment and are supported in bringing in the day-to-day -day lives a fair balance between work and leisure. The civil service will definitely benefit in terms of enhanced productivity from the dedicated and loyal workforce. I'm allowed to dream, for example, that putting up nurseries for mothers close to the place of work will enable them to be back to work after maternity leave with peace of mind. It is a proven fact that a satisfied workforce will contribute to enhance quality and timeless timeliness of services being delivered to the public service and meet the expectation. Ladies and gentlemen, while I want to champion the welfare of public offices, I also expect excellent service from each and everyone. As Minister, I shall work towards a scheme to reward those who distinguish themselves by sheer hard and quality work. But I will also make sure that sanctions are taken against those who track their feet and give a bad repute to the civil service. Alliance de Peuple has taken the pledge to improve the conditions and the quality of life of the people. Consequently, we have no choice than to work together as a team and make collaborative efforts to deal with the many challenges ahead. As to give satisfaction to the public and its legitimate expectation. I therefore rely in your cooperation and wholehearted commitment in defining a new strategy that will pave the way for the creation of a modern and citizen-centered civil service. 
My ministry will work actively towards engaging citizens and partners so that they have a stake in helping us making their lives better. Ladies and gentlemen, since I took office as minister on 17th December, I have started a constructive dialogue with the leaders of the civil service unions. I have taken note of the suggestions and will, with my team at the ministry, do what is needful. I can reassure that trade unions leaders from those present here that I have kept the door open for further interaction before I believe, therefore, because I believe in dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware that the public service suffers from archaic methods and policies. To remedy this situation, we have no choice than to move forward towards modernization. Modernization. To achieve this, my ministry will endeavor to strengthen institutions, promote good governance and ethical practices. Eliminating red tapes or getting rid of classic bureaucracy will just be a constant priority for me. In this context, I have already requested that the public sector re-engineering bureau be set up with appropriate qualified staff to review and modernize our process to bring about effective and rapid service delivery. ICT will thus be one of the major pillars of our development into a full-fledged e-government. I will work closely with my colleague, the Minister of Technology, Communication and Innovation in realizing this goal. Ladies and gentlemen, training of staff and building their capacity in it is a sine qua non to good performance standards. I am informed that although the Civil Service College was set up in November 2012, the project never took off in spite of the fact that Honorable Xavier Luc Duval, who was then the Minister of Finance and Economic Development at that time, had made full budgetary provision for the implementation of this project. I will personally see to me that the Civil Service College starts operation within the least possible delay with all necessary infrastructure. We shall make it a center of excellence in public sector management of world repute. Ladies and gentlemen, to come back to the function of the Civil Service House this evening, I have been apprised with much pleasure of the various sport, literary and recreational activities organized by the Public Welfare Council. I think this team deserves our praise. As a sportman, I will provide personal support towards such activities. I shall endeavor with the assistance of my colleagues, the Ministry, Minister of Youth and Sport, to revive the all football teams in the discipline in the discipline force as well as create a civil service football team that can evolve in the prime division. Earlier today, the Public Officers Welfare Council had a workshop with representatives of the Departmental Staff Welfare Association to seek the views and suggestions of the Council Action Plan for 2015. I am sure best results are always obtained through a process of consultation and dialogue. I wish to commend the officers of the Public Officers Welfare Council and the staff of my ministry for their dedication in this respect. I can assure them of my full support and encouragement in the endeavor to promote the welfare of the public officers and their families. I also take this opportunity to warmly thank Mr. Devandra Parsad Bruhi who had been the chairman of the Public Officers Welfare Council since 2006 to this day, and for a few years before that too, from 2000 to 2003. Mr. Rui has been a public officer with a long and meritorious career and has had position of responsibility not in ministries but also in various parastatal bodies during his distinguished career. I congratulate him heartily from the time, for the time and energy he has put to promote the welfare of public officers. I have taken note of his farewell statement, and I hope that this is only an au revoir. 
I look forward to meeting him again and benefits from his long experience in the civil service. I wish Mr. Rui plenty of good health and a life full of peace and joy with your family and your relatives. Ladies and gentlemen, since we are on the threshold of a new year, I wish all of you and members of your family a very happy and prosperous new year 2015 and look forward to work closely with you during the course of 2015. May God, may God bless the Republic and the people of Mauritius. Thank you.